Good evening, Carthage. What's going on? And welcome back to the warm, steaming jungles of Lustria. Steaming jungles of Lustria. At least that wasn't a steaming poo joke. Though the fact that I just said it now, I guess, kind of makes it happen anyway. Um, so we finished the first ritual. It's time for another. It's going to be the ritual of rumination. The ritual is underway, my lord. Even working together, it will take your greatest adepts some time to complete. Such is the ritual's power that the great vortex itself distorts under its pull. Am I the only one who loves it when this guy dies in the chaos Be invasion? Wary, though, for while the vortex is weakened, the forces of chaos will slip into this world. Ready your defenses, for they will doubtless be drawn to the ritual's power. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't scared. I am scared. In fact, Gustav, he started in just the right place. He's ready for it. Let's go, ugly. Welcome to the jungle, where we got fun and games. Well, Silent Slayer strolled confidently into Lustria, though he may soon regret it. He brought what he thought was the best of his Chaos Warriors. You could follow him. Armed with great weapons, halberds, knights with lances, and even the somewhat suggestively shaped Doom Can- or Hell Cannon. Yeah, it, that's just- it's strange. Warhounds, everything that he thought he could muster. But he will soon find out that what he mustered will never be enough. Got some blessed Pterodon Riders with Fire Leech Bolas that are gonna come in and literally open fire <laughs> as they wheel through here supported by a skink chief and a skink priest lore of heavens and here comes Gustav the croc not even an entire unit of chaos knights concerns them the cohort of Hulatl backing them up and then more sacred croxies nearby the fight is well and truly underway. We're going to hit a Curse in the Midnight Wind here. And it makes Scion Slayer's forces start to fall apart early. As their stats are absolutely drained. The Hell Cannon takes a couple of point-blank shots, but it won't be long before it is shut down. The Colossodon Hunter, or yeah, these, sorry, Ripper Dactyl Rider, or no, Colossodon Hunters, my bad. The Colossodon Hunters here help put an end to it. see the Hell Cannon won't be long for this world. And Scion Slayer is quickly realizing that he got himself into a fight that he can't possibly handle. Boxing with an angry croc, not exactly a recommended pastime. Golfing with him, however, as you just saw, he's, he's quite good. He's got a tea time at the Lustrian Country Club, and today he's going to be having lots of uh, balls to go for here because of the heads that he'll be ripping off these Chaos Warriors. And I'm sure he can use their sword as a T, or just take it straight off their head, however it works. He's quite the golfer. As the Scion Slayer's army flees, he won't get to escape unharmed. He's going to be embarrassed, put down, if you will. In fact, here he is fleeing away. You can see the Umbral Tide and Amex and Barbs unleashing a fury upon him. Giving him a good feel for what his time in Lustria is going to be like. And that he's welcome to stay for as long as he wishes to be on fire and poisoned. Let you all enjoy his demise here. Get wrecked. Ghoulator Scion Slayer? Mm-hmm. Real scared, buddy. As I previously mentioned, <laughs> welcome to the jungle. Welcome to the jungle. It's not all fine and dandy here. Um, I'm kind of thinking if I... Force March patchy up in here behind these guys that I can get reinforcements and like straight wreck. Yep, there we go. Consider it done. Patchy Gustav. 
combined for the clean kill. Oh, but Chaos didn't get reinforced. Interesting. Do we have enough to reach him? Oh, please. Uh, well, we'll probably kill this Stegonon. Honestly, he needs to be replaced anyway. So if they do... Nope. He's, he's there. He's there. Alright. Vessels of Chaos destroyed on turn one. That's what I'm talking about. Though, there were some Norskin Raiders out and about. And we need to finish off the mortuary here with John Hammond. We had won this on the last episode. Really, Temple Guard dies. I'll bet. I'm sure. Take that one on faith. Bunch of bull crap. Bunch of bull crap. Alright, here we go. Three turns. Where do I re these guys recruitable here? Yes, they are. Um, it probably takes two turns up there, though. Whatever, just recruit it here. Um, yeah, if those Warhounds of Chaos show up, uh, I might send Patchy this way, like, over towards the Star Tower or something. Give him a chance. We got a bunch of skill points to divvy out. Let's take care of that real quick. Uh, John Hammond has leveled up. We've got this Hunt Leader. That's going to get our Feral Carnosaurs and others. Beast Drivers would be good. Ancient Salamander Stegodons. We didn't end up putting a Sally in that army, though I think we have one here. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I'm going to go ahead and put to sea with this army. Um, we're going to head north and go disrupt uh, Ulthwan and Nagarond in their final attempts here. I don't think Nagarond has control of a couple of the settlements that they need to. So I think right now they're obstructed, but it's 13 turns until their ritual finishes because it's the last one that lasts like 20 turns. It's a bit ridiculous. Um, let's go with piercing shots. Those uh, skinks can get pretty nasty up there on the Pterodon. Uh, I feel like we need to do some work on Gustav's personal skills here. Blade Master. I mean, his attack is okay. He definitely needs some uh, defense if we get a chance. That'll help a little bit, but not a lot. Let's go with Blade Master for now. I mean, I probably will do Enforcer of Order. Looks like we've got Lizard Wizard. And he is becoming quite the wizard here. Um, let's shrink up the Winds of Magic for the Comet. And we've got Paachi here. This slam is the bomb. Let's do Flesh to Stone here. Just kind of get some skills unlocked. Carnosaur is level 18, so we still got a ways to go. But already, this is a pretty deadly, deadly Scar veteran here. So wound Maker. Keep working up the damage, the hit points. And then Dennis Nedry Skink IT. The stuff we come up with, folks. Curse of Andre is really good because it's a nice debuff on enemies in a big group. Let's set our alignment of crafting here. And then we've got some stuff to take care of. Now, I may not show every turn end unless something has happened, like some battles or something. I'm pretty sure you all trust that I know how to click a building to build it. So I'm not going to make you watch each and every turn in unless something worthwhile happens. I want to focus on getting through the ritual on the episode. Well, well, we got a little action here. If it isn't Nagarond, Patchy's marching along past Ketza, and here comes Nagarond with a little bit of an intervention army. As you all can see, this ain't gonna be real pretty for him. It'll be pretty for you as we wreck the crap out of these try-hard dark elves. Under siege and tight on budget, Nagaron was forced to pick on Elizabeth, the dire overseer, a C student in the Nagaron school of somewhat dead-looking horse riding. She decides to ride side saddle, though despite everything else about her, is completely and totally improper because she's a dark elf. Really though, CA, side saddle? Anyway, rather than sending her with a proper, desperate intervention force, with executioners, 
black guard, black dragons, and all the other forces that Nagron has. She's sent with also the B and C team here and forced to fight against Patchy, the salty slan hovering in his throne. Now, instead of bringing Cold One Dread Knights, Dark Riders. Well chosen. You can see that the flanks already looking quite bad for the forces of Nagarond and their intervention. With all of the chameleon or salamander hunting packs, horned ones, temple guard pouring in, the left flank will fall very quickly, and the forces of Nagarond are allowed to pile up against the line because Patchy is well in tune with the plan of the old ones, and it is a great plan. Yes, a beautiful plan, even. We'll say that, okay? And it's gonna start with a burning alignment, courtesy of the engine of the gods. So a giant ball, the forces of Nagaron incinerated at the will of the old ones. And if once is good, twice is better because there's another inbound. Ah, uh, that sweet smell of burning Dark Elf. In the background, the Ripper Dactyl Riders having a light lunch of Dark Shards here. They're pretty tasty. You know, if you tenderize them a bit. Desperate times here from Elizabeth, who will die an ironic death that you all will see here in a moment. Being a supreme sorceress, a lore of fire. I think you can imagine where we're going with all the salamander hunting packs here. And the horned ones plowing through, tossing dark elves every which way. And the engine of the gods having broken through. Yes, Elizabeth is going to be burned to death. A supreme sorceress of fire who gets burned to death. Again, the C student, okay? The C student. Maybe D. I don't know. Depends on whether the teacher was giving her extra credit. Anyway, you all enjoy her demise. I assure you it won't take that long, and her embarrassment will be completed. Elizabeth, really? Never seen it spelled that way before, but well done. Well done. Represented your faction in an accurate manner. Meaning being a complete disgrace. Oh boy, and we get some action on the high seas. Boy, this episode's gonna be great. Now, Gentleman Jenkins is quite possibly gonna go down as the dumbest person on the high seas of Warhammer, even behind Luther Harkon, high on Warpstone. Because he brings this army, and don't get me wrong, I appreciate the handguns, but he brings that army versus this. Good luck with that, gentlemen. Having flunked out of remedial pirate school, Gentleman Jenkins failed the test on the single question the, the question was 1 plus 1 equals Yar, and he asked them to repeat the question. Yes, Gentleman Jenkins, not really known for much of a brain, now finds his army placed between a feral Dreadsar, a feral Dreadsarian, a Dreads... What is it? Hang on. Feral Saurian? Dreadsarian? A Dreadsarian? and also the Shredder of Lustria. And the Javelins to the Spine are definitely an omen of things to come. And then stabbed in the spine by a Scar Veteran, just to get things kicked off, you know, a little, little light-hearted fun here to start things out for Jenkins. I want to tenderize things a bit so that the Saurians can come in and clean house. You can see the Great Shredder coming in from that direction. And then the Feral and Dread Saurian over here. Yeah, it's gonna be a chomping. Jenkins has nothing in his army that can stand up. Hold these units packed, they're fleeing back. You can see that 
Not much challenge here. Not much challenge here for the Saurians. But dinner is plentiful. Absolutely plentiful. You can see in the background here the slaughter going on and... At least Jenkins brought a shield. He's known to forget that on occasion. But he did bring a shield. Good for him. Ancient Salamander doesn't really care about it, but, you know, good for him. You can see over here that three Saurians now at work. I don't know how often you get to see three Saurians at work. But it's a beautiful sight, and then couple that with the, the Thunderous one. That's basically like having a fourth here. In terms of the amount of damage they're going to output. And obviously Jenkins' army was finished well before it ever started. I'm going to let you get to finish this battle watching him be bait for all the missile fire and ancient salamanders. There will be no stories told of Gentleman Jenkins other than the passing joke at the local pub. Now, right after defeating Gentleman Jenkins, I was able to catch up to Ingemar Shiptaker. Yeah, <laughs> funny name. Not even worth the fight here. So that is rid of any enemies spawned because of the ritual. So unless Lothern throws the book at us, we should be pretty safe here. Is this an actual treasure? Or is this just some, like... Nope, nope, just something. The actual treasure is over there. Anyway, I'm going to get my two uh, fleets sailing close together, and I will see you all uh, the next time we drum up some action here. Well, a few turns later, I'm busy crossing the ocean when visit Capitano Sesico. Whatever. He's going down. A good friend of Gentleman Jenkins, before becoming a vampire, Captain Sisiko, or Capitano, my bad, Sisiko, heard about the deeds of her old friend and said, you know what? Hold my beer. I can do even better than that. And initiated the battle that you were about to see. Now, Captain Sisiko here, Capitano, my bad, my bad. I'll, I'll get it right eventually, maybe. Brings a pistol and a cutlass to a fight with the greatest warriors that Itza has ever known. You can see here my horned ones on the flank. About to get engaged with some Morn Ghouls. I'm sure this will end great for the Morn Ghouls. No problem. No problem. Now, although there was artillery, it was placed behind a hill. Because Capitano sets a high bar, you know, and place that artillery in a position where it can't even be used. You can see the Shredder of Lustria cresting the hill while my Chameleon Skinks and Poha Sentinel start to lay into the skirmish troops of the Vampirates in order to ensure that they get very little action in this fight other than a swift death. Shredder of Lustria plowing right on in, as is the Thunderous One. You can see Croak throwing up his shield and then calling in a deliverance of Itza on all of these pole arms and sirens will be quickly sent back to the depths of the underworld, leaving very little of Sasiko's army left. See there the rotting Promethean fighting and a Necrofex Colossus, which normally would be a somewhat frightening unit, but when surrounded by Temple Guard and Horned Ones, not so much. I guess I just thought it was Temple Guard. It's actually, uh, I believe it's just horned ones, and yeah, here comes the temple guard. <laughs> now we're right. In any case, got Croak over here, blasting his way through some depth guard. Very little issue there. And then the rotting Promethean wants a piece of the shredder. You can go for it, but 
Shredder is going to be way too tough for that. Got Gorok in here supporting. And the Legion of Shockwa and some Temple Guards as well. Cutting their way into the Rotting Promethean. Meanwhile, Capitano. He's got a pistol. Been shooting that pistol. Very scary. Doing occasional damage to some of my units. Anyway, I'll let you enjoy Capitano's last few moments before taking the place of Gentleman Jenkins in an embarrassing manner. Man, we're owning so hard. Like, our whole army should get the aquatic trait. You know? All these victories at sea. Alright, folks, it looks like Nagarond has confederated with the Dark Elves that were at the Blood Hall. I hadn't previously defeated them. And since we're absolutely swimming in all kinds of jungle cash, we're going to just recruit another lord over here. And. Oh boy. Let's see. What do I want to use? Let's go with the, uh, let's go with the Croxagore Ancient. Weapon Master, Strategist. I don't know what some of these things do. Campaign movement, leadership. Let's go with Cat Pillar here. <laughs> like a big piece of heavy equipment. That's where his name comes from. Um, let's get him stacked up with some troops here. He's going to have to mostly recruit from the Global, though Global recruitment has been made to be a little quicker. What, what we'll do is I'm going to get a, some Temple Guard... Since they're quicker, let's go ahead and get a few um, regular Saurus each turn so that we can more quickly put an army together here. And we have these uh, Blessed Pterodon Riders with the Fire Leech Bolas. May not be the best unit, but we'll go ahead and spot them in just because these guys are on our doorstep and we may have company before we would like it. And uh, I want to keep my other armies in position. I've got kind of an army here. There's Gustav, there's Patchy, here's John Hammond. Speaking of John Hammond. He needs to be headed up here to uh, recruit back um, another unit here that he's missing. Let's see, local recruitment. Let's uh, let's give Hammond. Um, I don't think he'll be able to get a salamander from here. I think that would only come from global. Unfortunately, he's already got the heels. Ooh, man. Do we dare go, like, triple Stegadon of Doom? I kind of want to. It would be a lot of fun. He doesn't have an Arcasotec. Let's throw him an Arcasotec here. Alright, so... Well, you know what? I kind of want some more ranged... Well, these have ranged. We've got quite a bit of range. Well, I don't know. Having a lot of range doesn't hurt. Let's... You know what? Let's throw in the one more solar engine. Because I can't get the, um can't get the uh, real unit I want there. Anyway, we've only got two more turns left. I've almost arrived at Ulthuan. Um, I'm gonna actually go ahead and sail up and just kind of carefully get positioned here. I keep my two armies together. They've taken a little damage over the way, though we got in a spot there where we're kind of healing off a little bit of it now. And we're in position to attack um, Lotharn. They just hit their final ritual. And I'll show you what I've got in store for them. The Cosmos engine was activated as the Plax foretold. But it was not brute force alone that turned the gears. Knowledge was the spark of ignition. Ignorance is a chasm. Knowledge is the bridge that will deliver us from peril. Alright, so another ritual down, and we are poised to go after the ritual of contemplation. However, on the next episode, things will be interesting. Why? Well, the Dark Elves have arrived, and they sieged the Great Turtle Isles. Something we should be able to push back on, based on what we have there already. But we've also got Admiral Pardak here, cruising around in his Black Ark, which really doesn't look like it could sail. But, nevertheless, it is. But here's the most interesting part. The Hyles think that they're headed towards victory here. I've got two armies on their doorstep. 
with three dread Saurians. I'm about to call in a desperate intervention on him. High Elves about to get rocked, people. Gore rocked. So come back for the next ritual and get ready for some awesome action. Air of Carthage signing out for now, and I will see you then.